nature lovers, Bob Ellis here with another episode of Notes from the Field. And today, we have a special treat for you. Today, Lou Jost has submitted a video, and Lou is the lead scientist for Ecominga, which is a foundation that is down in Ecuador, whose mission is to protect and preserve Ecuadorian rainforest. Now, Lou is going to present on a topic that will make you see plants in a fundamentally different light than you ever have before. Here's Lou. Hi, I'm Lou Jost, one of the founders of Fundacion Ecominga in Ecuador. And in this video, I'd like to show you the world in a new light, literally. But to do that, I have to remind you of some physics. Uh, light consists of photons, and each photon has a particular wavelength. And the wavelength is determined by the amount of energy carried by the photon. The colors that we see are determined by the wavelength of the light. And blue light has more energy than green light. Green light has more energy than red light. There are also uh, invisible parts of the spectrum which we can't see. Photons of ultraviolet light carry more energy than photons of any of the visible colors. And the colors around us in nature are mostly produced by pigments. So for example, the pigment chlorophyll is green because when white light hits it, chlorophyll absorbs the red and blue wavelengths and reflect the green wavelengths. So most of the colors we see around us are produced by these kinds of pigments. And they're, they're reflected light. But there are some other mechanisms in nature which produce colored light. There's phosphorescence, bioluminescence, incandescence, iridescence, which maybe I'll talk about in a future video. But in this video, I want to talk about fluorescence. Fluorescence light is not reflected from the object, but rather generated by the object itself, like a light bulb, like a fluorescent light bulb, exactly like a fluorescent light bulb. This leaf, right now, is emitting, producing, red fluorescence light. So how does that happen, and why can't we see it? To understand what makes fluorescent light, we have to, again, uh, think about physics. Molecules are, have different energy levels. A ground state, which is the lowest energy level, and the stable condition of the molecule. And then there are different excited states at higher energy levels. And if something can kick up the electron into a higher energy level, then when the electron falls back to its stable state, it has to emit a photon whose wavelength corresponds to the energy difference between the state that it was in and its final state. So sunlight is shining on this leaf and is exciting the electrons in these pigments up into a higher energy state. Once an electron is in one of these energy, high energy states that's not stable, it will tend to fall back to the ground state. First it falls through a few minor subdivisions of the major excited state, losing a little bit of energy due to uh, heat and vibrations. And then it drops down to the ground state and emits a photon whose color is determined by the energy difference between that state that it was in and its final resting state, the ground state. And for chlorophyll, it turns out that uh, visible light and also ultraviolet light can excite these molecules, kick up those electrons, which then drop down and emit a red photon. Now, we can't see this red light because it's washed out by the incident light. But if we could excite this fluorescence with an invisible light, with ultraviolet light, and we go into a dark place where there's no incident visible light to wash out the fluorescence, we'll be able to see the red glow which this leaf is producing right now. And we'll be able to see it directly because it won't be washed out by the incident light, by the visible light. So we're going to do that. 
Okay, a word of warning. Ultraviolet light can wreck your eyes permanently. So it's essential to, uh, to use protective eyewear. I use this, these polycarbonate goggles. And my ultraviolet light source is a ultraviolet flashlight, a Convoy C8. And I've added a, a magnifying glass in front of it and a, to focus it better and an additional ultraviolet filter that passes no visible light. So all the light that comes out of this flashlight is pure ultraviolet light. Okay, let's see what we can see here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it very well, but this leaf is faintly fluorescing red, the chlorophyll red light here. My fingers are blue. Okay, night is falling. Still pretty, the sun is still up, so there's still some natural light. But let's explore this little section of moss here to see what colors are waiting for us when it gets really dark. See how the moss is red and there's some blues? Some of the moss stays green in some of the moss, I should, I should be more specific, this isn't really moss, these are bryophytes uh, related to liverworts. And many of these are, both mosses and liverworts are bright, brightly colored in their, fl their fluorescence light is brightly colored. I have to wait till it gets a little darker. Okay, here's a, a bean leaf. These often fluoresce bright red. Whoa, look at that. Almost too bright for the camera. So, uh, this is pure chlorophyll fluorescence. This is what chlorophyll looks like when it's not protected by a layer of light blocking uh, cells. Many of the plants that grow in bright sunlight in, in stressful habitats have a sort of blue fluorescence on top of their leaves and I think this is these are lignin compounds protecting the leaf but this fleshy uh, bean has no protection at all bright that's you're seeing the the bright fluorescence of the chlorophyll while we're here let me try to show you something about this chlorophyll unlike almost all the other fluorescent materials that we'll be looking at Chlorophyll fluorescence changes with time. Uh, it's already starting to fade out compared to when I first sh shined on it. Um, compare these two leaves. This leaf is now duller than this leaf. If I were to let this go, oh, and, and it changes with time in a complicated way. Okay, here I'm going <laughs> to probably burn my finger. But uh, there's going to be an outline, when I remove my finger, there's going to be an outline of chlorophyll fluorescence of a different intensity than the part we're seeing now. Look at that. See that? Chlorophyll fluorescence is strongest a few seconds after the first ultraviolet rays hit the leaf. Ferns are also very fluorescent. Look at this fern glowing in the red. This is again chlorophyll fluorescence, but you see also a little bit of blue fluorescence on the stalk of the fern. And th that's lignin fluorescence. Lignin and related compounds uh, glow, typically glow blue. And there's a bean, a much brighter fluorescence from the from the legume, from the bean again. Look at that. Another fern. Brilliant red. Wow. That's the chlorophyll fluorescence, of course. Bromeliads, now the fluorescence light.
here's grasses they often have this purplish color combination of the red and blue chlorophyll chlorophyll red and the lignin blue beneath it there's a bright red leaf that's pure chlorophyll fluorescence or there's some of the grass again here's a liverwort growing on the side of my house Brilliant. These are, as I said earlier, these are brilliantly fluorescent. Here's some corn that I've put out for the birds that live here. Fluorescence are bright blue. So here's some elaphoglossum ferns in my headlamp. And now we'll see their fluorescence light. fluorescent bright blue. Plants aren't the only things that are fluorescent. Scorpions are famously fluorescent. You can see in the bottom quarter of, bottom right quadrant of the picture, there's a scorpion waiting for its prey. I'm going to try to dig it out of there a little bit so you can see it better. Well, I'm not doing too well. I'd like to end with some close-up macro photos of the ferns in my yard in both daylight and ultraviolet light. Here's daylight, ultraviolet, daylight, ultraviolet, daylight, ultraviolet. This is just ultraviolet and here's one of my favorites. I took a closer picture of this using a microscope objective in front of my camera. And here's a liverwort fluorescing not only in visible light, but the fluorescence is also in the infrared. So thanks for listening. Oh my gosh, what did you think of that? Wow. Mind-blowing. I want to thank Lou and the folks down at Ecomunga Foundation. And uh, Lou wants to produce some more videos and put them up on the, our uh, Notes from the Field. And I think it's a good idea. So be looking for some more of these from our Ecuadorian friends. And why don't you go ahead and like the video. If you have comments or suggestions, go ahead and put them in the box below. Subscribe. And uh, we look forward to bringing you some more of these videos. Mm -hmm.